What is up, everybody, and welcome into the Backliners Podcast, Agro and Barracuda. As per usual, I'm adjusting my webcam. Barry, uh, oh wait, I was, before I get into that, I do have to let everybody know this episode of the Backliners is presented by Factor Meals. Just head on over to go.factor75.com slash backliners60 to get 60% off your first box. That's go.factor75.com slash backliners60, six, zero. Uh, for 60% off. Yeah, uh, I'll have you know, Barry, that this time um, I actually, up oh, it did it. Uh, you know what? I was just about to say it wasn't working when I did. I actually remembered to test this time uh, for my desktop audio and make sure that that was all good. And then they wouldn't have been able to hear you uh, if I had not tested it. But now it looks like they can't hear you anyways um, because I've been... Yeah, I'm I'm doing my best over here. Nope, not that one. Uh, let's try that one. Nope, that one's not gonna work either. <laughs> oh wait, that one is gonna work. Oh man, he's got it, baby. He's got it. Uh, I'm only coming out of your left ear. Oh, what the heck? I am. Uh huh. Properties. Default. Okay, that didn't help. Uh, advanced audio properties. It says I'm the same. Why is it? I'm left ear aggro. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. It. Why? Why do these things happen to me? How does that even? Yeah. How does that even happen? How does this happen? I haven't opened OBS since last Monday. Why does this happen to me? Okay. Let's try this. Hold on. Bang. How's that? Still the same. Yep. All right. Yeah. Well, I don't think I've ever had that issue with OBS. Like going left ear, right ear. Oh, that's just how it is. Enjoy left ear aggro. I'm left handed, so um. It's only appropriate, uh, and it's also an appropriate start to this episode, Barry, because it's a it's a bye week. Um, mm-hmm. Things are always a little weird on bye weeks. We did want to have an episode this week, um, but didn't have particular content to talk about uh, that was pressing, so to speak. Um, so I asked our Patreon Discord, which you can access by going to patreoncom slash backliners uh, and what what they wanted us to do and that was my first mistake Mm -hmm. that was a big mistake too a huge one actually because i didn't know what they were gonna say i really didn't you know i thought maybe i was hoping that someone would be like hey i've been playing a lot of ranked i need some tips on like Mm -hmm. how to Mm -hmm. win as a solo laner i'm like yeah baby we could talk about that for a little bit that would be great uh i was thinking maybe we could talk about uh (laughs) someone wanted to know like um, what are your uh, memories from season four worlds? Like, what was it like in the mm-hmm. building there? And I was, I'd be like, yeah, that's a great topic. Let's go over it. Instead, what I got was, hey, one time you guys all looked at the Smite subreddit and reacted to the top posts uh, on the subreddit. And I really liked that episode. You should do that again. And I was like, Man, I hope someone else has a different suggestion. And then the next, I think you know, that might have been Soj. And then the next person was like, yeah, I actually remember that episode. It was really funny. You guys should do another one of those. And I was like, okay, man, I've been, I've, I've been cornered. I've been, I could have ignored Soj if it was him uh, very easily. Um, yeah, I genuinely don't remember reacting to the Me normal either, Smite Reddit. Man. I only remember reacting to the SPL Reddit, but it was about like other teams that weren't mine. Yeah, that might be it. Yeah, it was Soj. Uh, yeah, and Timmy is the one who, who kind of set me up. Armanius jumped in. I've been griefed. I mean, I Timmy's know, idea is good with like the tier list of certain, mm. or like the drafts of different things. I like that idea. That I like that idea. idea as well, and that is something that we're going to do. So, um, you know, no idea what this episode is going to really look like. For all of the uh, Smite-only uh, consumers of our podcast, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Um, we'll definitely be talking about Smite at least a little bit uh, if we're going to be reacting to some of these posts uh, on the Smite subreddit, but um, we... We'll also be doing a lot of non-Smite content today, so, you know, that's how it Mm -hmm. is with the bye week. If you don't want to tune in, I understand. Um, But, if you don't know what we're talking about with the drafts, Barry, can you actually maybe link it in the the Twitch chat? Basically, uh, Timmy sent us this TikTok on our Patreon Discord, 
of two guys doing uh, a cereal draft where, you know, they were trying to make the best fi- team of five cereals. Top pick was Cinnamon Toast Crunch, an obvious first selection. Yep. Uh, Captain Crunch was the second pick off the board, which is psychotic, by the way. Yeah, that was a really bad pick. As a Captain Crunch lover, that was a psychotic pick. Like, uh, just, ab- like just abysmal. Fourth or fifth. Or not even on there, I yeah, think. Yeah, I could see it sneaking in and being a real Dark Horse pick, but I could also see it not making it at all. Uh, so yeah, that was wild to me. Um, but yeah, just kind of drafting teams of various different things. Doesn't have to be serials, uh, and we will be taking suggestions um, from the chat. So if you are live in the ta- chat, which is, of course, at twitch.tv slash prediction esports, uh, if you're listening, you, you can tune in to us. Mostly Mondays. Today we're recording on a Tuesday. Because it was Halloween yesterday. Been a lot um, of Tuesdays lately. Yeah, well, you know, we've been we, we lead busy lives. We're busy men, mm-hmm. Dara, and our and mm-hmm. our listeners uh, and viewers and supporters um, know that and appreciate that about us. I think. Oh. I Crafting hope. best of video game controllers. Are there ten viable video game controllers? Is the problem? I don't think so. Will you do like three each? Yeah. I mean, there's okay. like... Let's well, start with that. I started at like SNES, I think. Well, that's not... So that on one's there, definitely... Yeah, no that one's one's definitely not on there. All right, here's good podcast content. Here's the... Barra, heads or tails? Uh, heads. Hey, Siri. Flip a coin. It's heads. Ah, oh, so lucky. All right, Barra, you get first pick then. And we're not... They didn't snake it, which I thought was ridiculous. Uh, mm-hmm. Which I thought was completely ridiculous, but I'm pretty sure this is just a free win for you now. Do do key, does keyboard and mouse count? I would assume not. I would well, assume not as well. Yeah, I would assume oh. not. But if it is, it is number one for me. I feel like it would be. It's a video game controller, right? It's a way to control a video game. Yeah, but when I hear controller, I don't think of mouse and keyboard. I feel like controller is like a different. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Yep, you're right. Subgenre. Okay. With that in mind, we're going we're going three three on each side. Uh, Wait, what are the options? Well, that's for you to figure out here with your first pick. You're on the clock. Yeah, but I don't know like which. I mean, Video, I'm, I'm a big any console of all time. I would say playstation i think you are so stupid this is the easiest draft for me in the entire yeah, I world think... unbelievable that i steal away xbox one controller with the second pick unbelievable Barra, and just... here's why i had deb- I, I, th- I think Tom i just like the thumbstick or thumbsticks i like the mm-hmm. thumbsticks more on playstation controllers for some reason i don't yeah. know why it's a I preposterous opinion um it just doesn't work and here's why and i've debated f thought about this for y- like legitimate hours of my life over oh, multiple that different that also does not surprise it, it really shouldn't the big difference between xbox and playstation uh-huh. controllers i've got an xbox controller right here this is great podcast content the big uh-huh. oh yeah which playstation that's a good question from kathara which i'm just gonna go with ps3 ps3 PS- okay yeah that's a, no, no, that's a solid controller and it's probably the second best controller but it's not number one because at least so for fighting games and things that you need to use the pad it is better but for shooters, uh, sports games, anything along those lines, the Xbox controller is better. And it's because your thumbs are offset. And that gives you leverage on the controller. When you have both your thumbs on an even plane here in the middle, you have less control over the... Con- it doesn't feel as secure. Whereas when they're offset, it gives you a better grip on the overall controller. And that's why PlayStation controllers are better for fighting games. Because if you're using the D-pad on an Xbox One controller, your fingers are no longer offset. Uh, and that's why the Xbox controller is better. Xbox One controller is my second pick. Or is my first pick overall, the second pick. Or my first pick, the second pick overall. Yeah, I think my next pick... I I didn't have a Wii growing Mm -hmm. up, but I don't think that would be on there for me anyways. No one's putting a Wii mode on there. No way. I mean, I think for familiarity's sake, I want to say GameCube? I think it's a good pick. It's just, I mean, the one of the old Xbox controllers was like the biggest thing ever. Yeah, I think um, it was like the an original absolute Xbox. brick. Yeah, an and absolute brick. Three sixty, hmm, maybe I go three sixty. 
No, I'm just going to go with the GameCube. It's a good pick. Uh, and it's what I wanted. Um, but I feel like this is kind of cheating because I don't know if you've ever used one. Um, but there's a little bit of a flex right here, though not as much as it used to be. The PlayStation, uh, the PlayStation 4 controller is really good. And I know I just went on a rant about how offset thumbsticks are better, and they are. But the haptic feedback on these bad boys, like the the variable trigger, uh, like strength. Um, what is the, haptic feedback? It like shakes when you when your character is like shaking, uh, or like it it the like, like vibrate. Yeah, when you're well, yeah, but more it's more uh, intentional and like clear than that, like. In Ghosts of Tsushima, a great single-player game that I played on PS5, uh, you use a bow and arrow, and depending on the bow, the trigger is, like, harder to pull because the, the bow string is heavier. Like, it varies in strength and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what? It, it's incredible. Yeah, it's insane. I can't believe... And this is... I feel bad almost because you you just haven't experienced it. This yeah, might even... There are a lot of features that make me think this might be better than Xbox One, but I've just planted my stake in the ground so hard on it that I had to take it first overall. Uh, and I still stand by it. But the features of the PlayStation 5 controller are unreal. Um, and that's going to be my pick. This draft is already over, Barry. You lost. Um, I regret I regret to inform you. Yeah, I'm afraid, as go, the kids say. I kind of just want to go N64 for fun. Just for nostalgia's sake. Yeah. Did you used to, when you were playing Mario Party, did you do the strat where you take your left hand, like if it's the, like, ro like wiggle the thumbstick one, did you, like, take your hand off and do the, do it with your oh. palm, like, dig your palm into the middle and... Yeah, I did it so hard, my skin came off my hand. Yep. Yep. I was uh, raw and I was peeling. That's probably TMI for no. the podcast, but... No, it, that's, yeah, that's, that's I, appropriate. Yeah, I... I mean, back in the day, you want Mario Party was like the most important thing, and if you won a Mario Party, then like the rest of your day was a good day. Mm. If you lost, the rest of your day was a bad day. So doing whatever it takes to win a Mario Party is very important. And if I'm going to rub the skin off my hand, I better win, and Best I did win. win. So okay, and that's, and that's worth it. Um, I stole this from chat a little bit, and I do feel bad that I looked at chat for this. Uh, for that that put me onto this, and this is an off the wall suggestion, but I think I'm so far ahead that I can int my final pick, and it doesn't matter. The Guitar Hero 2 guitar is my final pick. Uh, I, I did not like Guitar Hero. You didn't like Guitar Hero? Nope. This is an ice cold take in a show that is going to be full of ice cold takes from both of us. Uh, guitar Hero is an unbelievable game. Um, especially the Guitar Hero 2 guitar. Uh, guitar Hero 3, the better game. But, it's but it, the guitar itself was not nearly as good as the Guitar Hero 2 guitar. Uh, and I also have one of those lying around i think it's actually downstairs right now but uh yeah that's that's our draft um so yours was ps3 gamecube and n64, N64. yep nintendo fanboy which i respect uh mine is xbox 360 playstation 5 and uh or wait, yeah i have ps yeah playstation 5 is that a ps5 yeah it is i don't remember what the, yeah i've literally never on. touched a ps5 controller before you should you should come check it out. It's really fun. Um, and then the Guitar Hero Two controller. Uh, I mean, you, you went on this rant about haptic feedback, so it kind of got me excited about. There it. you go. Your feedback is going to be haptic. Um, okay, so I don't want to do. You know, we're we're gonna break it up. I'm gonna go through, and the, I will say that things have definitely changed from the last time we allegedly went over the Smite subreddit. Um, mm -hmm. And then my position now is uh, very different than what it was then so there are obviously going to be a lot of things that i can't uh that i can't really like discuss although barra said that it was you thought it was the smite pro subreddit i'm looking at the smite subreddit uh right, smite's definitely more fun yeah i think this is just where we should go but uh i'm also full of regret no matter what um i'm just sorting <laughs> from the past week <laughs> uh -huh. going to the past okay go to past month the past, past month this is a good one okay let's check the past this is month. A, that was a good quality post my reddit oh the sign in for the first time in a year and this is what yeah. i see what have we become and it's the taco sura skin credit to this poster because they got the baka Sur the taco sura skin in a great like pose here this is a very mm -hmm. funny pose 
uh, mm -hmm. that I thought was great. Um, but yeah, that is good. Well, for a month, it's going to be a lot of like, uh, I feel like there are even less things that I can really like talk about. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Here than if we just do the past week, which feels like, you know, a more appropriate uh, period of time and one that I can react to some of. Um, the f the top post over the last week is a meme from a day ago uh, that is, my mage will build percent penetration in Soul Reaver, uh, says the devil, or thinks the devil, I don't know. And then it's Jesus with... Chronos Pendant, Divine Ruin, Spear of the Magus, Spear of Desolation, and Soul Gem. And uh, that is a very common occurrence. Even in, like, fairly high-level ranked games. Um, I haven't been grinding ranked a whole lot this year because I've just been, like, playing so much Smite during during work, which is not a complaint by any means. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, it's I'm trying to make sure that I'm not burning myself out or anything like that. So my MMR is... Uh, low to say the least for it for where i typically would like to play and uh if i don't play mid this is the type of build i see very frequently is the lots of cdr uh lots of flat pen and absolutely zero damage to any frontliners whatsoever yeah this just seems full of troll responses <laughs> uh one of the comments is that's 38 30 pain with 40% CR, not killing a tank, but sure, uh, hurting a squishy. And he did edit it and say everyone replying to me thinks, or they think that he thinks the build is good. Mm -hmm. And then the OP said, with 200 plus magic prots, one 20% pin item is equal to three spears. It's any cost effective, etc, etc, etc. And then he said, never denied that, but you also shouldn't be dumping your kit on the tank. Mm. Which I cannot tell if he's trolling still. I assume he's trolling still, because mages I... should be hitting tanks. Yeah. Because that's kind of, Reaver that, just kind of kills good, tanks. This is a really, way to turn this into a much more positive uh, thing, uh, Bear, is that we can use this as a teaching moment. This is good. Um, True. Yes, as a mage, well, let me, let me clarify that. As everybody, you should build for who you are going to hit and be hit by, not for who you would like to hit and like to be hit by uh and so what i mean in this instance is yeah this build with zero percent pen but a ton of flat pen and ton of cdr and all that kind of stuff would be great if i were hitting their backliner uh i won't though because it's a normal game of smite um and that is and that just isn't going to fly the vast majority of the time so i do think that i see a lot of players like they get hit, you know, a, a soul laner gets in front of the mid laner and the mid laner just like runs away and doesn't use any buttons on them because they just want to like hit the enemy ADC with their buttons. Uh, mm -hmm. But what you should do is just hit who you can hit uh, at all times. And that doesn't mean using your buttons without thinking about them or anything like that. But if I had to choose between waiting four seconds to you know, run around a corner and then use my jump to get over the wall and then I'm right in front of the ADC without a jump but I've got all my other buttons up. Or I can just use all my buttons that aren't my leap on the Cullen who's right in front of me and we can kill him and then we can get to that other dude eventually. Uh, yep. Hit the Cullen who's right in front of you. Um, you'll win a lot more games that way. And it's the same thing for Hunters, right? It, like, mm -hmm. it would be great if you didn't have to build XE or you know, Silver Branch or anything like that, and you could go 10% pen with Wind Demon and Deathbringer and just, like, one, sh you know, four-tap uh, their mid laner. But, boy, are you going to be a lot more useful if you just if you just kill that tank right in front of you and then you can do other things. Like, you should build yep. for who you who you will be hitting. Uh, and it's also not tanks. nearly as flashy as hitting the squishy people. It feels no. like feels kind of like a chore to be yellow damaging down their front line, but sometimes that's just your job, either mm -hmm. as mage or ADC. Um, so even, I mean, maybe outside of Conquest, that build's okay? Maybe? I don't play that much non-Conquest, except for Assault, but even in Assault, most of the time there's like one or two tanks. 
So, or if you're in the game, you're going to build whatever you're playing as a tank, and no matter what. So there's always going to be a tank when you're in there. That is, that is true. That is very true. Which is, in my opinion, is what you should do. Mm. So someone can start a fight and someone can initiate. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. I just think that is a big uh, noob trap um, yep. for players as they start to climb in ranked. And in their casuals and everything like that is thinking that you're going to be able to do something that you probably won't be able to when you could just take the guarantee. Uh, and you should take the mm-hmm. guarantee every time. Um, it will make your games so, so, so much easier. Uh, I promise. Yep. Um, literally today, I, I was, was playtesting, and uh, there we weren't playtesting anything um, in particular, but just playing like a... Well, we were playtesting for next season, but otherwise like a pretty normal game. And I just spent all game slamming into a Cthulhu because Clumsy was playing Cthulhu solo which is, again, very normal, uh, not revealing anything. Um, and I spent all game just basic attacking in Cthulhu. Uh, but boy, did I, you know, I was putting out a lot, you know, I kept my other player, my other backliner safe, and we won. Because uh, they're, t- and I could have just sprinted. Uh, actually, I did literally one time. <laughs> this is a good example. I did in today's playtest, literally completely ignore the tanks and try and kill Chaos, who is the enemy mid laner. And I got, absolutely annihilated um and then i said holy crap that was the hardest anti i've done in so long uh and that is really true um and every fight after that i just hit the tanks and that was just it there was something in the air did you wake up and today your brain was just weird my brain was just weird today yeah me and destiny we're just stupid today like i woke up and i was Hmm. like my brain's not gonna work today like right when i got out of the bed i'm like yep it's not gonna turn on today that i had the exact same thing I had the exact same thing. Let me tell you a very true allergies? story about today. I don't know. Maybe the moon isn't full or anything. I saw it uh, when I was going to get dinner. Um, mm-hmm. It's like a half moon. Um, here's a funny story about not Smite at all. Again, apologies to our Smite-only listeners. Um, I've been craving Taco Bell. And the only Taco Bell is like 15 minutes from me. That's close. Mm-hmm. And I went the other day. And this Taco Bell, these poor souls who work there, there are never enough workers and they routinely just close in the middle of the day or in the middle of like dinner because they just don't have enough people. Mm -hmm. And I do not blame them in any way, shape or form. Uh, The the line for the drive-thru is constantly like to the road. It is so busy. Good Lord. But it's a good Taco Bell despite all of this, uh, which is impressive because Taco Bell is one of those fast food restaurants that has one of the biggest differences between a good Taco Bell and Mm -hmm. a bad Taco Bell. This is a good Taco Bell, despite all of this. Huge shout out to them. So I've been really craving Taco Bell. I went the other day. They were closed right in the middle of dinner. And I was, or they they were like, it's going to be 40 minutes because we have one person working. And I was like, you poor soul, I am not going to do anything. Like, I'll get something else. I'm so sorry this is happening to you. This is like the fourth time that's happened to me going to this Taco Bell in the past year. Uh... So I've been craving Taco Bell ever since because I was already craving it, didn't get it. So now, so I wake up today and I'm like, man, my brain is not in the zone. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to get up. I'm going to take my Adderall like I do every day because I have ADHD. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start working till lunch. Once lunch gets, you know, once it's lunchtime, I don't have any meetings. I can take a little bit of time, go out, grab the Taco Bell, come back, get in the zone right after that. I have like a little nugget to look forward to in the future and then I can focus. So I do all that. I go to get the Taco Bell, and the, one of the one of the side effects of Adderall is that uh, it makes you not hungry. Um, but I was like, I'm I really want this. I'm hungry. I'm feeling good. I go to get the Taco Bell. I get way too much because I always do, and I bring it back, and I start eating it. And the Adderall had kicked in so much at this point that it didn't even like I I. I couldn't enjoy it. Like it just takes Mm -hmm. all of the joy out of food, um, which is definitely a big downside, but I just like don't eat lunch and eat a bigger dinner where, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I'd been looking forward to it so much. I ate like one of my four items that I got. And I was like, this is such a, like, what am I doing here, man? That that was how I, that that was how this day has, has been. That's awful. Uh, But then I got in the zone Adderall giveth and Adderall taketh away. Like it took away my Taco Bell, but I had an unbelievably productive 
3 to 4.30 today. I did, like, five hours worth of work in an hour and a half. Uh, so, you know, you give and you take. That's uh, that's kind of how it goes. Don't take Adderall unless it's prescribed to you. Um, <laughs> that's my disclaimer. <laughs> that's my disclaimer. Uh, I'm not supporting it. I swear, I have a prescription. <laughs> That stuff is a drug, man. Let me tell you, it is crazy. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I guess we should just move on to uh, sauce. So, anyways, drafting. Sobek. Um, yeah, sauce drafting. That's our next one. Yeah, I think so. Okay, uh, heads or tails, Barry. I'm gonna go heads again. Hey Siri, flip a coin. It's tails this time. So easy for Aww. me. I'm going hot sauce, number one pick. Uh, That's a good pick. I'm not a sauce fan. I'm going to lose this draft. Uh, People are not going to like me as much as they liked me before this draft started, and I'm okay with that. Um, But hot sauce is the one sauce that I I really love. Uh, Million varieties. Can put it on Mm -hmm. so much. It is good. Hard to get that type of enjoyment, like that type of uh, impact out of another sauce. Uh, You Mm -hmm. know, lots of sauces are sweet or savory or whatever uh not that many are spicy uh it's really hot sauce. I, I assume you mean like frank's red hot yeah yeah or like in that territory yes in that not territory. like yeah not buffalo but like hot yes yep yeah like okay. frank's red hot uh okay. yeah any any type of hot sauce like that that's my number one pick well i mean i'm going barbecue mm, i knew you were just go barbecue you're a barbecue well, this stand. Is... Yeah, I put barbecue sauce on everything. It's like mm-hmm. my favorite burger sauce. It's my favorite thing to dip fries in. It's just my favorite sauce overall. I don't think it's the best for everyone, but uh, it is the, I guess, like, the sweet, smoky, spicy barbecue sauce okay. is the one that I... Do you not, know the differences not... between the regional barbecue, like... I don't like Kansas City know, barbecue versus Carolina barbecue and all that kind of stuff. I will say I don't like the vinegar based sauces, but I don't know the actual regions for which one is which. Mm. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. But vinegar is just I don't like that as a barbecue sauce main. It's it's not great. That's fair. Are dressings considered sauces for the purpose of this draft? Let me ask you this. If I had said mm. ranch, would you have been, would you have called me out on that? Because ranch is a dressing. Been... It's not a sauce. Yeah, I don't know the difference in a dressing and a sauce. <laughs> salad sauce? A salad sauce. That's a good point, Timmy. Okay, well then, I'm going to get, <laughs> this is a terrible pick. And I, again, I've already conceded this draft. Uh-huh. I'm going with my personal favorite sauce, outside of hot sauce. I... I'm going to get roasted so hard for this, and I'm just ready. I just got to mentally prepare. It's uh, Italian dressing is my second overall pick. Uh, I'm an Italian dressing lover. Um, it's great. It's like, it's just oil and vinegar and water and seasoning, and it's delicious, and I love it, and I don't like any other mainstream sauce. So I don't know what, you know, I'm building a team that I want to that I want to play with, uh, and I don't want to play with ketchup Fair. or mayo or mustard or any of this nonsense. Mm-hmm. Um so I'm going Italian dressing. If you guys haven't cooked, like, if you haven't Wait, marinated, are we, are we doing like, dips or sauces? We're doing sauces, right? Sauces, yeah, sauces. Okay, okay. Uh, or dip dips are different, I guess. Condiments, yeah. like I guess, is like I don't know. Uh, is pizza sauce a sauce? Marinara sauce? Oh man, yes, yeah, it is. And I've and I've completely griefed this draft. Uh, okay, well I'm taking that. Yeah, I don't know marinara if pizza is and marinara easy top pick. Yeah, are the same, but. I'm going like roughly pizza sauce. Okay. Yeah, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Um, okay. That's fine. Uh, okay, that's a strong pick, but that does open me up to a really good follow up here, which is like Alfredo or any type of heavy cream sauce. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, cheesy, delicious goodness. Uh, kind of doubling down, going back to back on the Italian train here with Italian dressing and then Alfredo, but uh, I'm happy with where I've ended up. So yeah, I'm going Alfredo uh i'm gonna have to go hmm i don't know which i'm surprised you haven't snapped snapped off a mayonnaise or a ketchup or a mustard do not like mayonnaise or mustard ketchup they're gross ketchup in my opinion is only for fries 
Mm. And tater tots. Tater tots are good. Do you like or, tater tots uh, or fries, fries more? Ooh, tater tots, I think. I think tater tots are more consistent. Uh, I think fries have a higher top end, but a much, much, much mm-hmm. lower bottom end. Yeah, bad tater tots are also really bad. They're just mushy and just wet. Yeah. yeah I, I think if I, like, if it was like a last meal situation, I would choose tots every day. Yeah, tots are. Or not every day, because I guess I'd die. Bear, are you at the point where, for your last, would your last meal be vegan? And you're allowed to plead the fifth yep. here. If, uh, really, yep, it would 100%. be? Yep. Holy cow. What would it I be? don't. I don't crave meat anymore. I craved grilled chicken for a year, but at this point, I don't crave meat. I crave the design of the meal and the way it's put together, like for burgers. Mm. Like, I'll crave burgers, but I won't crave like a beef, beef burger. burgers. Right. I'll crave, like, the bun, whatever, like, black bean or, like, chickpea or whatever um, Interesting. kind of burger we want. And, like, I crave pasta, but we just use, like, TVP in place of, like, the uh, beef mm-hmm. that you put in there, like, pork, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I I don't know what it would be, honestly. Honestly? Okay, I don't know what mine would be either. I think I would have too hard a time deciding. This might be a lame answer, but Destiny just made some um, really good. It's like a Chipotle copycat, but, like, upgraded. Mm. Um. And that was probably one of the best meals ever. Mm, there you go. Like, it was... The, the flavor depth was just so good. And you put guac on it. It's just perfect. So, yeah, probably just the Chipotle bowl. Just due to recency. There um, it is. Okay, last... Or next sauce for me. This is a hard one. Because um, I'm stuck between three. Okay. But I think just for how many things you can use it on, I'm going to go soy sauce. Oh my god, what a pick. Barra. Thank you. I am being absolutely smoked in this draft. My goodness, soy sauce is so good. I was thinking general so and I was thinking teriyaki and soy. I was fighting between the three. Well, of teriyaki them, is like base it's just soy and like a bunch yeah. of other things. I feel like it yeah, covers yeah. it. I feel like I'd be cheating if I took okay. teriyaki. Uh Okay. No, soy is an unbelievable choice. Um What's even the point in me continuing, man? You got marinara and soy sauce. Like, good lord. I got hot sauce, though. That's what I'm kind of... That's what's Hot sauce me. is banging. If you had gotten all three, there would be no point in loading in. Yep. Have you ever gotten through a draft in an SPL game and been like, can we just forfeit now? Like, there's literally no chance. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the time, trust me. <laughs> and some of those games will end up winning, and then some games I'm like why did we pick this draft like oh my gosh like i'll be saying that during cards before cards during mm. the game not saying it out loud but i'm just I was like gonna say i'm sure your teammates I, I, really feel the confidence yeah. coming from you that's it that's um, a meerkat special when we'd play ranked up together all the time back in the day we, we would get into loading cards and the without a de- without fail every single game meerkat would go in the exact same voice we lost like every every game look at who they yep. have we lost it, and it would be even he would really triple down if uh, there was absolutely no one recognizable on the enemy team that's when we had guaranteed lost uh and he was right more often than he was wrong uh to be fair but does meerkat still play he probably doesn't right? no he's uh, he's been very busy with school he has not been mm. uh, he's not been playing a whole lot of smite unfortunately i uh, i miss playing ranked with that little guy my mmr doesn't Same. necessarily but um yeah you know sometimes that's just how it be uh okay my what is it my final pick no we have we each have three i feel like we've been talking about sauces for so long i just want to consider yeah. a draft we could just do threes that's fine i lose oh i had like a few more that i was gonna go for okay all right hold on i'll we'll just go bottom two then because i've already lost and i doubt that i'll take the ones that you uh want um do i even have two more sauces that i like uh yeah okay uh balsamic vinegar um that's a very good you know it's good for bruschetta it's good for caprese salads um you can tell that i grew up eating a lot of italian food um and then last but not least but maybe least this is a pick for the people uh because i don't want i don't like this this sauce but my wife loves it um and everyone who has adult taste buds loves it and it's yum yum sauce like at hibachi places 
Uh, I was going to take that. Oh, get bodied. Uh, I absolutely agree with <laughs> you. Um, yeah, I don't like it because it's mayo-based, basically. Uh, at least it tastes like it is. But people love that stuff. Um, it's not for me, but I needed a, I needed someone. I needed something strong to end my draft with because I'm getting bodied. So, uh, yeah, that's my, uh, that's my team. I've got hot sauce, uh, Italian dressing, Alfredo sauce, balsamic vinegar, and yum yum sauce. My last two would be pesto and sriracha. Oh my god, those are such good picks. What's the point, man? What's the, I've been out draft. I've just been blasted in this draft, man. Absolutely like, okay, brutal. it was ketchup or sriracha, and I just like sriracha more overall. I think I just use it more often on more things, and ketchup, like like I said earlier, ketchup is a very specific sauce for me. So yeah. yeah, no, you win this draft. I concede. Uh, well played. You you earned it. I will say that I've never tried sriracha because I've always thought it was just ketchup. Oh, no, it's really good. It's, it's kind of spicy. If you like hot sauce, you would like sriracha. I do like hot sauce. And I've real and I've been told that it isn't anything like ketchup, actually, and that it's really just like a chili sauce. Uh, yep. And so I want to try it. And I meant to buy it last time I was at the grocery store. But now I will remember to uh, to buy it this time around. So I'll try sriracha uh, maybe this week and, uh, and give you the verdict. Um... All right, going back to the to the Smite subreddit for some reactions. A lot of these are just memes. Uh, I feel like I'll get called out if I don't say something about it, but obviously not in a position to really talk about the second highest post, which is um, talking about the the player count for Smite. Um, but yeah, I mean the the numbers are there, but we we are obviously hoping that a lot of the cool, exciting stuff that we're working on is gonna get us uh get us bumped back up and um it is what it is you know we're uh, we're just gonna not not much to to say about it but i think uh a lot of the season 10 stuff um has been really exciting working on it and really uh, really excited to show it off to everybody and uh hopefully we get a lot of new players and a lot of players coming back to to try it out so i think that's all i can really uh, contribute to that one um nice. there's a post about the top every tier five skin in the game uh, Barra, do you have a favorite tier five? Uh, I don't really know all the tier five. Well, luckily there's a post on the Smite subreddit with every tier five skin in the game, and you can. Just, yeah, I am looking at scroll, it. Right you can scroll through them and. Uh, uh, and I was clicking on it when you said that, and I was still like, I don't even know half these skins. Really? Um, yeah, I'm not. I definitely any. would not have been able to. If you had asked me how many tier fives, I think I would have said like ten. Uh, there are fourteen, uh, in the game currently. I think this one's actually pretty easy for me. I think it's the Cthulhu skin. Oh, the Cthulhu skin is a really good one. Cthulhu skin or Archonthantos for me. Interesting. Interesting. Just, I'm pretty sure Archonthantos is the first one. It is. And so just for memorabilia's sake. Yep. And then the uh, the design, everything about the Cthulhu skin, in my opinion, is like top, top tier. 10 out of 10. So... Yep. Yeah, I mean, you just can't argue with that. Yep, Cthulhu skin is on... Uh, if we were to tier list the different tier fives, there's no doubt that Cthulhu is in the S tier, or S plus tier, or whatever. Uh, yep. I think my two favorites that are not Cthulhu uh, are the Queen of Cards, Izanami. I really love that skin. Uh, there, I think there are a lot of really cool things about it, and I really like the aesthetic. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm a big fan of Queen of Cards, Izanami. And then Frostfire Uller. Uh, is another one that I think the, the animation cool. switches um, are awesome. I think the theme is really great. Uh, big fan of Frostfire Uller. Uh, so those are my two favorite tier five. I always hate that skin just because playing against it's so annoying. It is. Uh, he does say a lot of things a lot of the time. Um, yep. But, you know, it's fun when you're playing it. So. Same same with the who you skin, that ricochet noise yep. is terrible. And the old sound is like an armageddon movie in front of me well yeah it's supposed to be you know it's, it's this giant creature blasting like it's not uh, i know it's... i remember okay it's not gonna leak anything i remember that skin came out and we were spinning or we were screaming uh cyclone and he picked it i'm like this guy and then <laughs> just trying to scrim against that skin is one of the most terrible things you can't hear anything yeah it like, is, you can't hear uh, it columns, is you can't hear anything in game anymore. But you can hear when the ricochet, you know, his ricochet's I, down, we know. I think the third one's probably the cuckoo skin for me. I, I like that cuckoo skin. Oh, that is a really good skin, for sure. Um, yeah, the a lot of tier five. The, the chalk one, underrated. I'll say it. 
the chocolate one's really good. Is that the one where he gets on like all fours and walks around? Or In something? one of the forms, yeah. I actually don't like that skin. No, I think it that's cool. Nothing about that skin or makes me think chalk. Yeah, but it's a tier five. It's supposed to really like break the mold, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's three it's yeah. chalk three different ways. But, it's like a, it's like you're on a cooking competition, <laughs> you know? Today chefs I prepared for you chalk three different ways. Uh I think that's such a cop out, by the way. Um when it, when you're they're on a cooking show. My wife and I watch MasterChef all the time. Oh yeah, 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 I got you. And it's like your mystery box uh thing is you've got to use duck. And everyone's <laughs> creating these like cool duck dishes. And then someone just goes, all right, chefs, I've prepared for you duck three different ways. This is a stuffed d- duck. This is a roasted duck. And then this is a duck wing, uh, you know, fried duck wing or something like that. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you just couldn't decide which one to make, man. You know, like just pick one. Yep. Uh, I think it's a cop out personally, but the chef. The- I think it's a cop out too. Gordon Ramsay doesn't yell at them. So who am I to judge? You know, uh, not, uh, I, I certainly don't deserve to. Um, Another post that I wanted to talk about here that was uh, the number seven post of the week is uh, someone left Smite around Tsukiyomi release and decided to give it another shot. Shout out to them. Uh, but where are boots? Um, and it's a thread talking about the boots removal. Uh, thinking back on on this change and what it was like uh, pre-boots versus now, how, um, how do you feel... Like, do you prefer the game with boots? Do you prefer the game without boots? Uh, is it what you expected right after you found out about boots removal? Like, all that kind of stuff. Um, it was definitely shocking to hear that boots were being removed. And I remember the spike of having tier 3 boots versus someone that had tier 2 boots was, like, the biggest spike in the game. And also, I remember... I think it was Vin, yeah, it was Vin that did, like, the Boots 2, like, do more 1 straight into Boots 3. Yep. Um, Because, like, certain gods would have too much pressure. Uh, So it it added a bit of flavor, I think, with the Boots, but I think it was not healthy for the game overall. And then, yeah, you were in this awkward, like, I'm selling boots late game, buying this item to get my movement speed, and then I'm upgrading. Like, I remember <laughs> I remember selling boots and doing it incorrectly where I didn't have enough gold to finish the next item. Mm-hmm. So I would leave base with the movement speed and the tier two of the next item. <laughs> now that's what we call efficiency right there. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know. Because, like, as a pro player, you just kind of have to adapt to whatever patches or thrown at you right um, so i don't really know it from like an actual player's perspective because it's just like okay boots are gone now what's the best thing to do now right um but i i mean i like the idea of boots just because you had like warrior tabai you had ninja tabai for adc so you had like a specific route that you could go mm-hmm. um but i think they're probably unhealthy for the game because i know tank boots are like really hard to balance movement speed boots are kind of hard to balance and then warrior tab i really like absolutely cracked or pretty bad yep um and then ninja tab i got like buff after buff after buff and i'm pretty sure at the end ninja tab i were like the crazy. best boot in the game yep. yeah they were absolutely crazy and all the gold gaining boots shout out uh Midas boots and uh, Talaria boots and all that kind of stuff. Shouts to pressing two as Scotty and getting like 30 gold. Shout outs to me uh, watching your stream one morning and you on the day that you realized you could do that on Scotty and how you were, you did it. Like, I remember, I remember it so clearly. I was, we had desks at that point in a certain part of the office. We had, as casters, we had desks that like moved around all the time mm-hmm. and I remember I was watching it at my desk and you had, you literally, the strat was back then you had, Talaria boots were 1500 gold. You obviously start with 1500 gold. And every time you hit an enemy, you gained, what was it? 30, 30 gold. 30 gold. Yep. Um, and it put that God on a cooldown. Like it, it tracked yep. per God. But Barra, um, discovered or was told that if oh. you used Scotty uh, and then you just put Caldier's targeter on them and clicked and then recalled Caldier, that would give you 30 gold. 
um, and put them on cooldown. That would count as hitting them. And so you ran around the outside of Gold Fury Pit and to where, because that was a start where four people started on the right side of the map. Um, mm-hmm. And you clicked on two people at purple and then you clicked on the other two people at red. Then you backed and like bought like a bunch of pots or something like that. Cause, <laughs> cause you had 120 extra gold. And yep. I remember watching that and being like, Oh, that's not good. And I immediately like DM'd Ajax and was like, "It was you." I clipped it and sent it to Ajax. Oh. And I was like, "Uh, yeah, we shouldn't. This probably isn't right." And it was. Well, I would argue it was you uh, that uh, that that got it nerfed uh, or got that interaction changed. But yes, I was the one who narked on you. On I can't it. believe you. I that's thought true. I could. Have trust I not you. told that story before on the podcast? No, I don't think so. Oh, interesting. Yeah, uh, it was. That is true. I uh, I watched you do it and instantly clipped it and sent it along to the design team. It was your fault, Bear. If you had just fault. kept that, was that the tech... most fun ranked was. <laughs> really, like... it wasn't uh, Bumba's Sobek or Bumba's Kronos or oh uh, any no. any of those. Smite's been on fire a bit lately. You know, there's sometimes that's just how it <laughs> uh... be. Bro, I was in Incon stream today, like right after we got done scrimming, and <laughs> this team had five fins on it. <laughs> oh, I was watching that game too. Yeah, I was like, "What is happening?" <laughs> like, I will say what? that Incon How was last pick, and he picked the fifth fizz. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> and the ge- is the game already much harder to win at that point? Yes, uh-huh. I agree. Uh, but you could have picked a guardian. You know, like. He could have. He did also finish that game top damage, and he was owning. So it is. It is what it is at, at times. But yeah, there have been some. Uh, there have been some particularly unfun ranked men mm-hmm. at times. And Sino's uh, regrowth Bumba's Sobek. Uh, that was when Bumba's was the mask that gave you movement speed. Um, particularly unfun, if you uh, if you ask me. Um, all right, another post that I. There are two more posts that I wanted to talk about before we uh we get to the random question of the week though i did forget to ping people on our patreon discord to uh to put some in there and i don't know if anyone has since uh, since last week but maybe they uh okay we got oh, yeah there's one um yeah. the uh the bonus balance went live today uh and there were some some nerfs in here that that we can cover and <laughs> there's gonna be a youtube comment like smite talk starts at 8 50 or like 51 yeah. or something like that <laughs> Uh, and everyone will be like, what the hell is this podcast? Um, Fae Blast Hoops, uh, decreasing the shield uh, from 7.5% of the target's max HP to 6% of the target's max HP. Uh, do you think this is enough to knock Fae Blast characters out of the top pick, top ban? Or do you think that it will still uh, be a meta-defining item? Uh, I think it's only a meta-defining item currently on Emoja, and I haven't played against the Emoja in over a month, so... No one I think wants still... to pick it, huh? The... No, it's Surely... banned every yeah. game. Oh, huh. oh, yeah, it's... Yeah. I mean, uh, I detected the sarcasm, I would still throw it. Yeah, no, um, okay. It's... Yeah. Uh, I think it's still a good item. I think maybe on Sylv as well... You can see it occasionally. Guan, really good. Uh, yeah, on Guan as well. I think it's pretty um, good on Baron too. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't really see it too, too much anymore. Um, I think the nerf was needed. Um, honestly, I would just like to see Emoja nerf again. Like, I yeah. want to see that god get the. I don't know what. I don't know what you would do to Emoja. To make her not good. Because, like, she was dead for a little bit, I think. And then Fabulous Tubes, like, shot her through the tier list. Yeah. Like, all the way through. Yeah. And since then, I haven't seen her anymore. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Yumoja is certainly a constant topic of conversation for us. And, uh, you know, she's uh, she's one of those really difficult gods where... She's obviously yep. unbelievable in good players' hands, but the vast majority of people uh, struggled to struggled to utilize her, and there are a lot of really uh, dedicated support mains who are understandably frustrated when a god that already is harder to play and win with um, keeps getting harder to play and harder to win with. Uh, but you know, 
we um it, it's definitely uh you know i don't think i can say a whole lot more than that but she's mm-hmm. certainly uh been been a a topic of conversation for a long time um and probably yep. will continue to be until you know we we dial it in the right way um which of course mm-hmm. we are always trying to do um speaking of gods that are usually pretty good Amuzin and cop uh lost half of his uh physical protection reduction on stinger goes from 20 percent to 10 percent uh how big do you think this is for amc I think that's a pretty big nerf. Um, I think the 30 to 20 was like, okay, we can deal with this. I think 20 to 10 is making the, I'll uh, say, like the Oni Warriors comp a bit harder to run. Mm-hmm. Um, just because you can't burn that one person as easily as you used to be able to. Um, I, I He's still probably like okay for pressure and everything, but I don't think he's like top, top tier. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'd probably agree with that. Um, Cupid, uh, losing 5% slow on Fields of Love, was 35%, now 30%. Uh, how does this impact the little baby? Not that much. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think... I, go ahead. I think people will uh, miss Cupid a, a little bit till they get used to it, but yeah, not the biggest nerf. Yeah, I, I myself did the, the testing on this to see if it let you just walk out from the middle um, mm-hmm. of Cupid Alt without any additional slow. Uh, it is close, but you can't. Um, if they put it dead center on you, then it will still mez you. But mm-hmm. if you are off by just a little bit, a lot more people are going to walk out. And it is not, you think, oh, it's so big, aggro. How do I not put them in the middle? I'm talking dead center, like dead oh, center. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. you're going to be able to walk out of a lot more of these. Um, I think that this will impact him a good amount. Uh, but for Q- for for Cupid mains and all that kind of stuff, who are good about putting down their alt and using that slow to hit the one, you're mm. still going to, you're still going to get the Mez a lot um, in those types of scenarios. So probably not uh, destroying him, but we'll see if he continues to be uh, as much of an SPL priority after this. It wouldn't yep. surprise me if he wasn't because even if it's only 5%, a lot of times that ultimate's hitting three, four people in a fight or slowing that many people. And then it really isn't like a 5% slow nerf. If, if you spread around everybody, that's like a 15 or 20% of their, of the team's total movement speed in a fight that yep. they're getting back. So I think, uh, I think this was, you know, obviously I think this is the correct direction for the change because I'm a part of a team who makes these decisions, but, uh, I think it. I think that this will do a good amount of work to mm-hmm. keep him viable uh, without completely annihilating. Because Cube is one of those gods that's either best best ADC or unplayed. Um, yep, completely. So we'll see. Uh, Dodgy. Uh, speaking of gods that have been getting banned a lot, um, increased cooldown on her ultimate and loses a tiny bit of physical power scaling on the three. Uh, what do you think about Dodgy? I don't think that does too, too much, because I think people are still going Jones first on her anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the rest of her kit is, like, those numbers got turned up so much on top of the pin changes, where I don't think it's going to be that big of a change, unless she's getting a hard pressure in the early game, which I think some games is kind of hard to do. Um, so I don't, I don't think it's that big of a nerf. Yeah. Just because... I think the rest of her kit, the one, two, three, are really bloated, and I think that the fizz pin tree is really good right now on assassins. Sure is. Uh, it's also pretty good on this other god, uh, and that's Thor. Um, losing ten percent scaling on the wall damage. It was forty percent. Now going down to thirty percent. Everyone freaking out about the Thor change uh, initially, and understandably yep. so. You know, felt pretty pretty insane um, on paper. I've seen a lot less complaints as people have continued to play against it. Um, I don't know if you have felt the same in your, you know, stream or, or, you know, I know you don't go on Twitter all that often, all that kind of stuff, but I've seen very few like Reddit posts talking about it. Uh, seems like people after this, after this bonus balance in particular um, are ta- you know, complaining about it a little bit less. Maybe they mm-hmm. just got tired of it. Who knows? Um, but how do you think this leaves Thor? Uh, after I, don't, I don't think that change really does anything. 
do you still think that 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 adding the damage on the two is like a is is absolutely insane and just and just busts them uh no um but i, I just don't think this change like affects when you're gonna pick thor when you're not gonna pick thor like mm. Sure. Uh, obviously, it's like slightly less damage, but I think if Thor is good, they are still going to pick Thor. Sure. Um, and I kind of feel like that, regardless of the wall change in general, because mm-hmm. um, I didn't really n- notice the wall change that much. I, I also have, I haven't played like much ranked at all. Sure. Um, lately, but yeah, I yeah, I don't know. That sounds per- to be honest, like from a from my designer brain perspective, that sounds perfect to me um, because mm-hmm. Thor is one of those gods that is again hard to play. And if you aren't hitting everything, is going to feel very weak. And adding yep. this damage, you know, you still have to hit the wall. But I think that's a fair ask. Uh, if it makes Thor better in the majority of players' hands without making him feel insane at a high level, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, yeah, the change did less than I thought it would. Yeah, I think that... I still I, feel... Yeah. Like, when I die to Thor, I still think, okay, yeah, I should be dead there. I don't sure. feel like, oh my gosh, why'd they buff the wall? Like, I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I the know, numbers I'm, are I'm very dead. low. I understand it gives them another proc. Uh, obviously, that is something that we took into consideration. But mm. I do think that, as I said last time we talked about this change, I thought it was a little hyperbolic. But I understand that's how the com- gaming community is. I'm happy that it yep. seems to have died down and that Thor players who were struggling before... Uh, are doing a little bit better and that's reflected um in his mm-hmm. in his numbers so uh definitely good um last but not least vulcan like the smallest little slap on the wrist uh just one second increase on inferno cannon in a high level this is obviously not what makes him pro viable is yep. one second uh <laughs> on the inferno cannon but again for the vast majority of players uh this will uh feel a little bit better um, this is an ability that lower end players aren't as good about playing around anyways. Uh, so maybe it can be a little bit less frustrating, but we didn't want to take Vulcan out of the meta as soon as he got there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it seemed like the community was, I just think that we would have gotten a couple no Vulcan nerf questions. Uh, even if it's something small like this, at least sometimes, uh, I get the sense that, just letting everyone know that we understand what they like letting the community know that we are hearing uh and acknowledging what they think is good um Mm -hmm. even if we don't want to massively shake it up can be beneficial and i think this is uh an example of that that we agree that vulcan's really good um but not so much so that he needs to be annihilated out of the meta uh just yeah i feel just a little i feel about this change like i did the thor change where it just doesn't really do anything for the like the top tier when like when you're gonna be picking vulcan and i don't think it's like oh no i lost one second on my turret can't pick vulcan here like yeah it's it doesn't do anything for top tier and i i think the way you put it with like it being more noob friendly because it's harder to play around as a noob uh good yep fair enough Okay, like la- we're uh, we're already a little bit over time, but this was a Reddit post that I wanted to get your thoughts on. Um, Mystical male should be reverted is the uh, is the post title. Um, huh? Basically, even before the changes to health, mystical male fell off the meta after the health pool of everyone increased from nine point five. Now this poster believes there's literally no reason to buy it. Do you think that mystical? You know, we don't see any mystical male, so I don't think that we could say that mystical male is super strong right now Mm -hmm. based on what the community thinks uh but would do you think that mystical male uh should or is is deserving of uh a buff uh as a hunter player as an honest hunter man yeah uh that item is dead so probably does need a buff uh i literally haven't seen it at all i kind of forgot about it honestly hmm. um so if an item is in that territory it probably does need a buff but i i don't know if you would buy it over any other item right now i feel like it would need a pretty large buff um sure but yeah i haven't seen that item at all so i assume it does need a buff and that's that's my back well yeah i mean there's only 
you know, how many available item slots at a given game. Um, yeah, exactly. There are a lot of items that are good that still aren't bought. Uh, yep. So, you know, who knows? Maybe Mystical Mail is already one of those types of items. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think the... Wait, maybe Mystical Mail should scale off of your prots? Yeah, I mean, it could. Um, like a glad shield almost? Certainly um, a, a possibility for something that we could do, um, given, you know, not... Changes like that are always, like, exciting and fun. Um, I wish they were a little bit easier than uh, to, to implement so that we could you know those some uh, not even that one in particular but it's just like there are a lot of suggestions that people say that are like yeah that would be really cool and and we would consider something like that if it were really easy Mm -hmm. um but it's much more time consuming or difficult or expensive than people realize not saying again that is the case for that necessarily mystical mail thing um but yeah i think uh i don't know how good it would feel though late game if that's an item that scaled right like that's always been a weakness of the sure, item is yeah. it doesn't scale super well and with glad shield at least they gotta hit you um with do you want to be getting ticked for a good amount from a full tank uh getting damage from that um without having to do anything but be near you uh maybe it would probably be really fun for the solo laner uh maybe not so fun for uh, for everyone else around them but it's an interesting thought you know, I'll, I'll store it up here in the old, in the old iron trap, uh, okay. or so I call it, but yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's the way it be. Um, all right. That's our little, uh, rundown of the smite Reddit and, uh, and all that kind of good stuff. It's time for a random question of the week. Again, we grab these from our Patreon discord. If you want to, uh, support us directly, uh, and uh get to be a part of the community discord where you know someone shared an absolute banger song that i forgot to go back and compliment Um, oh i did listen to all the music in there today yeah mojo uh i I really liked some of the songs that mojo was putting in there and timmy had a really good one too so you get pet picks food picks music suggestions all that kind of good stuff um oops my sound is on from asking siri to flip a coin um Spitaz asked in our Patreon Discord. Oh yeah, patreon.com slash backliners if I didn't say that. Um, exo- they went down the rabbit hole of legal exotic animals you can own. So what they need to know is if we could have an exotic animal, what would we have? Money, no issue, and in a reasonable amount of space. So no, like no elephant or giraffe. Mm. Uh, any type of exotic animal. Well, I need to look up a list because I do not know what hmm. animals are exotic. I thought of my well, head. just like if no, you've never heard of anyone having that as a pet, unless it's like you know, like tigers and that kind of stuff are still like exotic, uh, even though you know, Tiger King and all that, all that kind of stuff. Um, Ooh, I want a fox. There's, there's a like fox is a fox. really good answer because they are adorable. Yeah, I searched exotic animal list, and there's a animal called the. Fennec? Yeah. F E N N E C Fox. Yeah. And that looks adorable. It looks kind of like a Pokemon more than like an animal. Yeah, it really so, does. Uh, oh, a- after Ajax scrolling... in the chat, he says he wants a cheetah. That would be cool, but how it, like, it would, it'd be so fast. I would love to have like a hawk, you know, but not oh, inside. Cool. Um, but just like an outdoor thing for a hawk. I think that would be really cool. Um, a red panda is an obvious answer here because they are adorable. Um, those okay. or a panda and just like a panda bear if i could have a bear cub i'd be all about that um that would be awesome. just having to be a cub forever yeah yeah just that just a just a bear cub forever um because bears are funny they do funny oh. stuff and they like walk around funny there's an animal called the binturong which is a bear cat oh and that is ugly never mind do not want that <laughs> that looks possessed okay, okay not, me, not that one there you go good answer or good question chat. spit test um hero wants to know what is your favorite and least favorite type of french fry cut and why oh boy um, yeah i feel like you're gonna go off here oh boy 
Well, there are a lot of positives and negatives to each type of French fry cut. You know what's the most overrated is the waffle fry. Waffle fries are not great. They're overrated, man. What do you, like, uh, I don't know what to expect from a waffle fry. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the the consistency is so low. And then, you know, you go to waffle, uh, or Chick-fil-A. Uh, Chick-fil-A stacks their fry boxes. I'm so convinced um, that they put all the good ones on top. They, like, they literally, like, shift them in some way so that all the good ones end up on top. So your first few fries are delicious. And mm. then your bottom fries, you get all the ends of the potato and all that kind of stuff. And look. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm fine. I love potatoes, all that kind of stuff. But it's just not the same consistency. Um, they can be way too thick. Uh, yeah, waffle fries are, are low tier. Um, mm-hmm. For sure. Sweet potato fries are trash tier. I'll never eat them. Because um, sweet potatoes are bad. Uh top tier fry shapes shoestring fries that are really nice and crispy are really good um I rustic sweet potato fries the sweet potato fries are trash but i don't know how to tell you this uh they're so bad um what? like i don't know the right term but like rustic potatoes like not no uh nothing no breading or anything like that just straight up potato that's been fried like think like fry guys or fr- fry guys five guys fries or to my pittsburghers uh potato patch fries potato patch fries are some of the best uh i love those um steak fries have a lot of thing good things going for them but they're probably a little too thick uh curly fries are good there are a lot of good fries out there um but shoestring uh-huh. are definitely top tier because i like them crispy you know that's uh, uh, don't like my first crispy i don't want them mushy man i want them nice and well oh in double coated fries double coated uh or double coated well it's just like a there's like a coating and then a second coating and then sometimes they'll like double fry them as well uh those are banging um those are good crinkle or meh crinkle needs to be done correctly if crinkle is done correctly it's really good if it's done incorrectly it's like the worst fry yeah i guess like a lot of fries are kind of the worst fry if they're done incorrectly i knew joe was gonna pop in here and say this this take of smiley fries are the best smiley fries have a terrible ratio joe i don't know how to tell you guys this they're it's not the right ratio of like breading or coating to potato uh because they don't use good enough potato quality, you know? Uh, smiley fries are low tier. I'm sorry. If I have to sleep in the guest bed tonight, so be it. Uh, they're not that good. They just aren't. So, did you did you come up with an answer? No. <laughs> like I said, Barry, my brain isn't working today, man. Can you remember uh, talking you said for like an string? hour and ten? Yeah, shoestring are, are one of my favorites for sure. Okay. Um, and then... Just like the only thing I could say was like rustic is the only thing that comes to mind. But uh, if you rustic? Google like, well, I went on a whole rant about it. It's like the Five Guys uh, or uh, or like Potato Patch if you're, but that's like a Pittsburgh place. Oh, okay, um, yeah, yeah, okay, gotcha. Those types of fries are are mm-hmm. top tier for sure. Yeah. Uh, so wait, is that your answer? Yeah, that's my answer. I'm waiting on. I was waiting on your uh, your oh, um... input on fries. I like sweet potato fries a lot. I wanted um, to do another spit take so bad, man. One of these days I'm going to ruin this monitor from just doing a spit take on a podcast. Uh, Honestly, I think I'm kind of boring. I, I'm just looking at a french fry list and I think standard cut's just the best. Standard cut are great. I, I think my top three would be standard, curly, and sweet potato in order. Mm-hmm. Top two are good. Like, I, I don't think I've ever had bad curly fries curly fries are ever good. yeah curly fries like, are really good i feel like even if they're cold like i've never had arby's fries and i'm like these taste bad arby's is criminally underrated man they really are if we're going fast food my top two would be checkers and arby's for fries i had checkers for the first time really? like about two months ago i think it was maybe maybe a little less than that uh it was solid it was pretty good. Their fries are good. Yep. Yeah, they have good fries, yeah. for sure. 
definitely way better than Chick-fil-A. Yeah, Chick-fil-A fries are not very good. Um, that's for sure. Yeah, it, it, when you get fresh McDonald's fries, those are really hard to beat. Um, but I would always take Checkers and Arby's or McDonald's. Arby's are really good. Can you imagine having a demographic so dumb that you have to stop, you have to start selling crinkle fries in addition to curly fries? What's the point? Wait. Like, they started selling crinkle fries as well. And whenever you get no, fries at Arby's, they go, curly or crinkle? And I'm like, why are you asking me this? Curly or just better? What? Yeah. You're right. What are they doing? What's, what? Dude, that's like the, that's, if I'm in their meetings, I'm like, we are so right here. How can, how are yeah. we getting punished for having the the better fry? Like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, that's just wrong. That's crazy. Crinkle fries were really good when I was younger, but I think I've kind of grown out of them. Yeah yeah they're, yeah they're like zaxby's fries are usually so under like so not great oh destiny was telling me zaxby's stopped seasoning their fries because too many people were complaining about no them being way. over seasoned yep well, I, it's been a while since i've had zaxby's i've heard they like they're criminally under seasoned now as opposed to like having so much flavor oh my god them. they they were under seasoned last time i had them i just remembered my friend was in town a few weeks ago and we got and we got zaxby's because he's from the north and they were under seasoned and i didn't say anything about it but i was thinking these fries aren't great uh yep. people ruin everything man it's the worst all right final question here from timmy uh the mount rushmore concert four artists or bands you'd like to see any genre or style oh i'd like to see that i haven't already seen no that you could no you could do have seen if you could like oh, build okay. your perfect concert four bands uh who, who would they be? Uh, this one's pretty easy for me, I think. I know one of them. Uh, oh, wait, no, it wasn't you. That was my that was my other friend who was telling me uh, there was a band that they wanted to, like, go see every time they're in town. Uh, oh, this is actually hard. <laughs> Barra, three seconds ago. Oh, this is going to be an easy one. Okay, well, I, okay, my current, my current would be Sleeping With Sirens, Fit For a King, Bring Me The Horizon, and Black Veil Brides, just because all of them put on such a good live show. There you go. Um, like, Fit For a King is probably, like, one of my favorite bands ever, and mm -hmm. the other three, like, aren't, but their live shows are so good. Mm -hmm. Um, and then kind of a, a list of bands I haven't seen, um... Would be 30 Seconds to Mars. It's, this is a throwback. 30 Seconds to Mars, Lincoln Park, Disturbed, and Trapped would mm -hmm. be my throwback concert. That sounds like a really good throwback concert. My my concert will be almost entirely throwback. Because um, that's just like the type of music that I generally listen to. Mm -hmm. uh, but my perfect four band concert would be the format, which is uh, a band... Uh, led by Nate Roos, who is the lead singer of Fun. It was his band before Fun. Uh, they are probably my favorite band ever. Uh, unbelievable band. Um, the format. Um, Envoy, which is a very small band from Cleveland, uh, who is basically really just good band. Paramore, but better. Uh, 10 out of 10, if you haven't listened to them, I implore <laughs> you to do so. Um format see i'm going all over the place like genre wise it would not be a very cohesive show but Fun. um i have a soft spot uh because it was my first concert for dashboard confessional uh oh and i think i would want dashboard there um for when you get like the sad drunk the sadness mm -hmm. in your drunk uh that's when dashboard would come on uh and really own and really own the show Oh, Simple Plan's really good live, by the way. Oh, really? I saw them yep. for sure at a Warped tour uh, back in the day. They were definitely at Warped. Um, but I think I was seeing a different, smaller band because mm -hmm. I was cool like that whenever they were Ooh. playing most of the time. Yeah. You heard uh, of them before everyone else did. Right. Well, no, I thought that they were uh, I thought that they were overrated because they were too popular. Oh. Um, you know, that's the type of emo kid that I was. Uh, like, I would, I would crap on people who thought that Angels and Airwaves was a good Blink-182 spinoff band because it wasn't the best Blink-182 spinoff band, which was Boxcar Racer, uh, which was one album. Um, 
But I am right, by the way. The Boxcar Racers one album is better than all of Angels and Airways. Angels and Airways had like two good songs. They were fine. Like, just they weren't that Blink, great. I just think. Just listen to Blink. Like, yeah, for real. But for real, listen to Boxcar Racer. They're uh, they're really good. Um, and then I also kind of want to say like brand new. Uh, that's always been one of my favorite bands, but you know, Jesse Lacey is like a bad person. They're lead singer, but you know, that's just how celebrities are. I guess, uh, we just have to all accept that. Um, looking through a playlist that I made recently, uh, a day to remember was a really good show. Um, mm, they were really good. Look. And I would definitely like to see them. Ooh, saves the day might be a good one. I've also seen uh, Connor Oberst of Bright Eyes live, and that was a really good show. So maybe like maybe like Bright Eyes, and he could play a little little bit of both. Um, ooh, Bayside would be a really good one. I'm literally just scrolling through a playlist that uh, I like. Yellow Card would be a good one. Yeah. Okay. I'm going the format: Envoy, Dashboard Confessional, and. Oh, I'm going Jenny Lewis. Uh, I'm going Jenny Lewis, and I wanted to. Uh, I'm really like Rilo Kylie, and then some of her also some of her solo songs because I'm a Jenny Lewis stan. Um, those are my four. I got there eventually. It only took me like wow, four. Was... and I don't feel confident in it even a little bit. Uh, but that's just the kind of brain day that we got. Um, yep. All right, thanks everyone for tuning in and watching uh, and listening. I know this was a little bit of an all-over-the-place show, but it was an all-over-the-place brain day for both of us, and uh, we've got um, got a bye week. Uh, next week, we'll talk SPL. Um, and also, uh, we have patch notes coming up next week, so we won't be able to talk about them tomorrow or next next show, but the show after that, we've got patch notes. Uh, we're getting close to Worlds run-up, which, uh, which should be really fun. Um, hopefully, we'll be seeing you guys at uh, the esports arena in Arlington, Texas for the world championship. Cause Barry and I will be there. Um, so that should be a good time. Uh, again, shout out to factor. They were the sponsor for this episode. Go.factor75.com slash backliner 60. Uh, the, to get 60% off of your first order, uh, highly recommend them. Uh, check out all the prediction shows on the network. They've got a lot of great shows covering a bunch of different esports. So you'll definitely be able to find something else that you're interested in and uh if you want to support us directly uh interacting with our sponsors or going to patreon.com slash backliner so the best way to do that um so we'll be seeing you there in fact we're going to be popping over to our patreon discord right now for our post show hangout as we usually do and we will talk to you guys next week barry in the meantime you know what to do bye okay all right that was coming a little from the stomach. Yeah, you got it. You got it. I, was, I, I was, saw you dig deep for that one, but it was solid. Yeah, I was bending backwards a little bit because I lost like control a little bit, and then I just had to keep forcing it out. Yeah, well, that's sometimes how it's got to go. Thank you.